Good afternoon everybody and welcome to our webinar on the Green Star Performance Rating Tool for existing buildings. Thank you for joining us over lunchtime today. My name is Carl Desai and I'm joined in the room with Andrea Davison. So we'll be running you through the rating tool today and Andrea will kick things off by talking briefly about the New Zealand Green Building Council and why we have green building rating tools before introducing you to Green Star Performance. Andrea will also talk about how certification works and the costs involved. I will then be talking through some performance case studies from Australia and the process for introducing the rating tool in New Zealand. We will be recording today's webinar, so for any of your colleagues that couldn't make it, please be sure to point them to our website where the webinar will soon be uploaded. Now we have around 20 attendees at today's webinar, however the only way you can interact is by writing in with any questions you might have. We'll take any questions throughout the presentation, however we'll only answer them at two points, which is halfway through following pre Andrew's presentation and at the end following my presentation. Now to submit a question, please use the control panel on the right hand side of your screen um, and we will receive it on our end and then we will respond to them when we get to the allocated times. I'm now going to hand over to Andrea who will kick things off with the introduction on the NZGBC. Thank you, Carl. Okay, so to start I will briefly introduce what we do here at the New Zealand Green Building Council. So we're an industry-based not-for-profit organisation and a member of the World Green Building Council. We have over 400 members from developers and contractors to government agencies, universities, uh, consultants, products and materials manufacturers and suppliers. So we're part of a global movement to move the building industry towards sustainability. So we do this by promoting the benefits of green buildings, by creating a common language, which is essentially our building rating tools, and demonstrating the value of building with sustainability in mind. We also provide education and training programs to assist the property and construction sector to acquire the skills and knowledge to be able to deliver a sustainable built environment. And thirdly, we advocate for and promote the benefits of green buildings and practices to the building industry, local and central government. So green buildings are quality buildings and there are clear economic, social and environmental benefits uh, to certifying with Green Star. There are international drivers for building green, so COP21, the Paris Agreement, uh, was reached in December 2015 and it's a deal that holds countries accountable and builds ambition over time. So this requires reporting of our emissions and implementation efforts. Investors are also starting to ask for green credentials to ensure that they are investing responsibly. The Global Real Estate Sustainability Benchmark or GRESB is an investor driven organisation committed to assessing the ESG performance of real assets globally. They have more than 250 members of which more than 60 are pension funds using the GRESB data in their investment management and engagement process with a clear goal to optimise the risk return profile of their investments. Here in New Zealand, the New Zealand Super Fund has likewise started to ask for this information so this is definitely something that we see coming and becoming a driver in the New Zealand market. And there are also other programmes internationally relating to carbon disclosure and carbon certification. So essentially there's a, a, a need for us to move towards carbon neutrality not just in our new builds but also in our ageing existing building stock also. And locally we have also seen more and more reporting of environmental issues uh, such as the sewage overflows that we occasionally get in uh, Auckland Harbour. Um, this, these kind of issues highlight the need to improve our buildings and infrastructure for greater resilience. So why build green? Um, after 10 years of Green Star in Australia, the Green Building Council um, there conducted a quantitative research study using data from 428 certified buildings in Australia to determine the overall reduced impacts of these buildings uh, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, energy usage, water consumption and construction and demolition waste. So these are some of the statistics that came out of that research when comparing these buildings to standard minimum practices. So it can be seen that there are definite environmental benefits that result uh, from designing and constructing buildings for sustainability. There's also research uh, internationally which is starting to support the notion that green buildings support the health and well-being of occupants and thus have real social benefits. 
Um, one research study found that patients in daylit rooms recovered 15% faster than patients in dull, gloomy hospital rooms. Other research indicates a correlation between a student's environment and their learning outcomes. And likewise, office spaces that are well lit, well ventilated and comfortable environments can have a positive impact on staff contentment, attraction and retention, as well as fewer sick days. So these benefits on occupant health can have a positive financial impact on a business in terms of productivity. It's also been evidenced that green certified buildings can result in lower vacancy rates, increased capital value and greater total returns, which will have a positive impact on the bottom line. So why certify? When you go to the super supermarket aisle, you'll see a number of products claiming to be green. So how do you know that their claims are true? There's a lot of greenwashing out there, so an independent certification such as environmental choices tick of approval gives you assurance that they have met environmental standards. So likewise for buildings, rating tools provide an independent third party verified badge of quality. The suite of Green Star rating tools that are available for use in New Zealand include the Green Star for design and construction of new builds and major refurbishments and Green Star interiors for fit outs. We're now excited to also be able to offer Green Star Communities certification available for precinct and community scale developments, which looks at the planning and constructing of uh, these projects for long term environmental, social and economic sustainability. And then what we're talking about today, um, Green Star Performance. Um, this is essentially closing the loop on the building life cycle. Um, we're launching this rating tool um, to the New Zealand market this year with the intention of driving continuous improvement across our existing building stock. So Green Star Performance, it's all about improving our building operations. So we're really excited to be able to engage not only with the design and construction industry in New Zealand through our existing suite of Green Star rating tools, but also now with owners of existing buildings and building and facilities managers. Almost any building is able to be certified using Green Star Performance, um, including offices, retail centres, industrial facilities, uh, hospitals and healthcare buildings, etc. So the rating tool really is flexible enough to be able to deal with all of these different typologies. In order to be certified, the building needs to have been in operation under normal conditions for at least 12 months. So this is called the performance period that will be looked at in the Green Star assessment. Newly constructed buildings typically need to wait about three years following practical completion in order to meet this 12 month requirement. However, buildings with a Green Star base building rating may be able to shorten this to 18 months. We saw from the previous slide that almost any type of building can use the rating tool. However, it does have to be an occupied building. The rating tool has criteria relating to indoor environment quality and as such is best suited to occupied buildings. Um, to note is that it has been designed particularly for standalone distinct buildings and not for tenancies within buildings at this time. And then lastly, if a building is wanting to target a four star rating, then a minimum improvement in energy and water use needs to be demonstrated in order to achieve this best practice standard. So what criteria is in the Green Star Performance Rating Tool? Some of you may be familiar with Neighbours New Zealand, which was introduced to New Zealand in 2012. And this is a rating tool that looks specifically at the energy performance of commercial office buildings. This is complementary to Green Star Performance in that it's one means of demonstrating compliance with the energy performance criteria within the Green Star Performance rating tool. The difference with Green Star Performance is that while energy performance is a large component of the rating tool, up to 23 points out of 100 awarded for this, Green Star Performance looks at other aspects of the building in terms of performance as well. So why do we look beyond energy performance? There are other attributes of buildings that ensure that it performs in such a way as to promote the health, well-being and productivity of its occupants. So indoor environment, air quality and ventilation, as an example, can have a significant impact on cognitive function and likewise, temperatures that are either too hot or too cold can have detrimental effects on staff performance. Having daylight in buildings can not only contribute to reduced energy and uh, lighting loads, but can also promote healthy sleep. Um, and we all know how uh, distracting noise can have an impact on our concentration. 
And then uh, employee engagement and feedback through regular consultation can help to drive continuous improvement. And the Green Star Performance Tool can be a mechanism through which to facilitate this engagement and ongoing improvement. So this is a, a summary of all of the credits within the rating tool. Um, and so this you'll see looks quite, for those of you familiar with our base building rating tools, it looks quite similar um, in terms of the categories. Um, so uh, with management, indoor, env uh, indoor environment quality, energy, transport, water, materials, land use and ecology and emissions. Though obviously in this case with Green Star Performance, we're not looking at how the building was designed and constructed, but we're looking at how it's operating across all of those areas. So some of the credits and criteria are quite similar. Um, so for example, having ongoing commissioning and tuning of the building, um, the criteria is quite similar to the base building rating tool. Whereas, for example, the materials um, category is quite different in that it's not looking at what materials went into the construction of a building, it's looking at operational materials. So what policies are in place around procurement and purchasing, um, and then what waste there may be from operations or from refurbishments that happen in the building. Now, some of the criteria within the tool relate to actions undertaken by the building owner or manager. So for example, ongoing tuning and commissioning of the building is an example of that. Others relate to attributes of the building itself, such as whether the occupants have good access to daylight and views. Other criteria relates to data, such as the energy and water performance data. Um, and others, other criteria within the rating tool is to do with management practices, policies and frameworks that help to drive better outcomes. Now with a building portfolio you may have policies and frameworks which are applied across multiple buildings within the portfolio. So these credits along with energy and water use data for each building in a portfolio um, can be targeted to achieve a portfolio rating. Green Star Performance has been designed with portfolios of buildings in mind. The certification process has been streamlined to take into account that portfolios of buildings may have these shared policies and practices. So to explain the portfolio certification process a little further, the first step is to register the portfolio with us at the New Zealand Green Building Council. And then the first um, round of assessment um, is where the portfolio uh, kind of policy type credits are submitted along with energy and water information for each of the buildings within the portfolio and that is looked at in the portfolio assessment. So at the end of this stage a rating is given to each building in the portfolio and then also an averaged rating given to the portfolio as a whole. Then in order to improve upon the rating, applicants may choose to submit information for additional credits. So this could just be for one building, for example if there's one building um, for which the information is readily accessible, or perhaps one building that's a high performing building, um, and that's where uh, that particular building might help to bring the overall rating of the portfolio up, the average rating up. Um, or it could be um, that other credits, additional credits, and building attribute uh, related credits could be applied for multiple buildings within the portfolio. So the outcome of the assessment will be uh, achievement of a star rating from zero up to six stars. Um, initially, portfolio certifications may not achieve highly in terms of a star rating, um, and that's okay. That's because the first rating is an assessment of what policies and practices are already in place and how the building is, buildings are currently performing in terms of their energy and water use. So the performance rating tool is, really is intended to encourage ongoing improvement. As such, there is a recertification process, so this is after three years, and within this three year period, additional policies, practices um, and, and credits may, um, uh, and, Additional policies and practices may have been implemented to improve the performance of the portfolio and additional information related to other credits can be submitted at the next round of recertification. 
Uh, to note is also that applicants may choose not to publicly announce um, their rating and that's okay. Um, performance ratings can remain anonymous and this is where the tool is really useful for a, for a kind of internal um, use as a kind of framework to drive that continuous improvement and um, some applicants may choose to wait until they've uh, achieved their target star rating before choosing to celebrate this publicly. So now what will um, performance certification cost? So for a single building certification, an applicant can target all credits within the tool. Um, and we anticipate that this type of certification will be of interest um, for owners of one significant building or perhaps a high performing building uh, to provide verification of its achievements. Um, so we have a flat fee um, here for a single building um, targeting certification and that's regardless of um, the size of building. Then for portfolio certification, there's a flat fee for registration and then a small per building fee on top of that. So this covers the portfolio assessment including the policy type credits and energy and water credits um, across the portfolio. For portfolio owners wanting to target additional credits, um, the fee for this is uh, variable dependent on the number of credits targeted um, and for how many buildings. So please do get in touch with us um, about that. And also to note here is that these fees are based on the applicant having membership with the New Zealand Green Building Council. Um, so again, um, if you're interested in information about um, membership or about what the non-member fees would be, then please do get in contact with us. So just to give you an example um, of what the fees may look like across a portfolio of buildings. Um, so you'll see, for example, um, a portfolio that may include five buildings. Um, instead of costing the 16,900 for a single building certification, it's now costing you uh, 4,500 per building to achieve that certification. So you'll see that the, uh, the portfolio certification is a, a really cost effective way to have certification um, across, uh, across a portfolio. So next we'll have a look at what this, the certificate might look like. So this is an example of a portfolio certification. So on the left hand side you can see that the portfolio achieved a four star rating with a score of 46 out of 100. And you can see the breakdown of where the points were achieved. Um, and the 12 month performance period um, that was assessed. Um, on the back of the certificate will be listed all of the buildings included in the portfolio certification and their individual scores. So this um, concludes my part of the presentation. Um, and before I hand over to Carl for his presentation, um, we'd like to open up um, to you any questions that you may have um, that I would be happy to answer answer now. Thanks for your presentation there Andrea, really uh, informative. We don't have too many questions coming through at the moment but we do uh, encourage you all to submit any queries you might have. This is entirely for your benefit so uh, please do shoot them through. Uh, we do have a couple here. Um, the first is regarding a neighbour's NZ rating and the, the distinction with Green Star. So the question is whether there's an additional cost for the assessment of a Green Star performance project similar to um, engaging a neighbour's assessor. Andrea? Um, no, Green Star certification, performance certification works um, more similar to how our base building certifications work for Green Star. Um, and that is that the certification fee um, covers the cost of an assessor reviewing all of the documents um, for compliance with um, the Green Star performance criteria. So um, yeah, that, that fee is covered in the certification fee. Um, there are potentially some additional costs that may um, apply, you know, that the applicant may have um, and that would be uh, any compiling of the documentation um, to then submit to us at the Green Building Council. So that can be done in-house um, or they may choose to engage an external consultant to pull together that documentation for submission. Thanks for that clarification, Andrea. Uh, a question here has just come in about the, the valid validity of the performance rating and how long it's valid for. Uh, so the question is how long firstly is the, is the rating valid and secondly what are the interim checks that are required? So what are the audit requirements 
Um, and I guess the follow-on question from that is whether a star rating can be changed depending on the, the results of those that order documentation. Okay, so the performance um, certification is valid for um, a three year, or it's, it's actually three years and 90 days um, period, so that gives you a chance to do the recertification. So essentially it's a three year um, validity. After a 12 and 24 month period, um, the energy and water data for each, uh, for the building or buildings needs to be submitted. Um, and this is actually assessed. Um, and so there is the possibility that a star rating may change during that three year period. Um, so the energy and water data is looked at at those points in time because energy and water makes up a significant um, chunk of the overall score for a performance rating. So if there has been a significant change um, in the energy or water um, use uh, during that time, then there is the chance um, that you know that the that the building or buildings may go up or down a star level during that three year period. Okay, so I think that um, wraps up our questions at this point. So what I'm going to do now is uh, hand over to uh, Carl to continue um, the presentation and give some examples um, out of Australia. Thank you, Andrea. And once again, please do shoot through your questions uh, as soon as they come to mind and we'll, we'll respond to them at the end of the presentation. So up until a couple of months ago, I had been working at the Australian Green Building Council for a number of years before joining the New Zealand Green Building Council in rolling out Green Star Performance. So I'll now share with you the story of performance told through four buildings that have been certified using the rating tool. Now, Green Star Performance was released in Australia in 2014, so it is still relatively new to the market. However, we do have a few interesting uh, pilot case studies to share. So the first building is the Wollongong Council Administration Building. This is a 13-storey building which opened in 1987 and houses 660 local government staff. Over the past 10 years, the council had introduced a range of building upgrades and management practices to improve the building's operations. They have been scouring the market for a standard or framework that would help them gain recognition for their achievements. Green Star Performance was the obvious fit. The five star rating that was achieved provided independent validation of the building's recent upgrades. According to the rating tool, these upgrades resulted in energy efficiency gains of 55% and water efficiency gains of 85%. And Council estimates that the energy efficiency gains alone in the building are saving $200,000 every year when compared to the 2007-08 baseline. The next building is more of a showcase building owned by the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. This building has achieved the most amount of Green Star ratings in Australia with a total of four. This includes the design and as-built ratings for the base building, the interiors rating for the fit-out, and now the performance rating for the building's operations. The achievement of ratings throughout each of the building's life stages goes to show that designing a sustainable building at the outset sets it up for success throughout the operational phase. The Green Star Performance Rating proves this via third-party certification and closes the loop on the building's life cycle. The next building is an industrial facility located next to Melbourne's airport. The developer and owner of the building wanted to test the water by having one building certified before potentially undertaking a portfolio rating. This approach is not uncommon as it provides applicants with a trial run for certification before scaling up to multiple buildings. Additionally, the applicant was able to claim benefit for this single building's performance rating in their GRESB annual reporting. This building is one of a number of non-office buildings that have been rated using performance, including retail shopping centres and other industrial facilities. This demonstrates the rating tool's flexibility given it is applicable to all building types and expands the potential for Green Star to be used in the non-office sectors. Now I'm sure you'll all be able to recognise this final building, the masterpiece which is the Sydney Opera House. When designing the Opera House more than 40 years ago, Jorn Utzon was inspired by nature and integrated many features which, thanks to performance, have now been recognised as pioneering sustainable design. Seawater cooling, a chilled ceiling design, recent lighting upgrades and best practice management policies have all contributed to the building achieving a four-star Green Star performance rating. Whilst the general consensus is, is that it's too hard to improve the sustainability of our existing buildings, 
the Opera House has shown that it most certainly is not. The benefit of Green Star Performance is that it provides a benchmark from which buildings can improve. Whilst the four star rating for a heritage building is impressive, the Opera House is looking to continually improve upon its sustainability standards. When the building's recertification comes around, the Opera House will surely have its eyes set on a five star rating. Now you may have noticed that we don't have any case studies on performance portfolios. And this is due to the fact that most applicants have opted not to disclose their results, which is perfectly reasonable. As Andrew mentioned earlier, it's given it's the, only the first round of certification, it may be that they'd like to improve upon their ratings prior to publicly announcing them down the track. Now, the GBCA recently published uh, an article on the success of portfolios uh, earlier this month, which is available on their website, so if you're interested, please head there. But whilst we're on the topic of portfolios, the trend we have seen in Australia has been their strong uptake. This graph shows that it took around eight years for all the legacy Green Star rating tools to rate 300 new buildings, whereas performance rated over 350 existing buildings within two. This is all thanks to the efficiencies gained using portfolio in certifying large swathes of building in one fail swoop. Rather than focusing on the 2% of new buildings built every year, the benefit of Green Star performance is that it taps into the 98% of existing buildings which currently aren't improving upon their sustainability practices. Now in bringing performance across from Australia, we recognise that, that there will need to be some adjustments made for the New Zealand context. This slide shows our current plan of works in achieving this. The tool adaptation process involves both internal NZGBC reviews and external reviews from local consultants. The entire process will be oversawn by a technical working group who will provide a final approval before our planned release in September. In parallel to this review process, we would love to see the tool actually being applied to buildings currently in operation, what we call pilot projects. This enables mutual learning to take place where the NZGBC can gain insights on how the tool is being applied and the pilot project gets to be the first to have their hands on the tool. This brings with it a host of other benefits, including those listed on the slide. The complementary technical support means that the NZGBC will be with you every step of the way to ensure the project's success. This can include workshops, regular meetings, and free formal queries up until the project is certified. If you or anyone you know may be interested in becoming a pilot project, please let either Andrea or myself know. So what's next? Well, here are the next two key milestones we'll be working towards in the next few months. Next week, we'll be running the first Performance Foundation course in New Zealand, targeted at existing GSAPs who will be able to assist projects through certification. If you're interested in this course, please register online or by emailing the education team on the email shown. And in September, the rating tool is slated to be released. Uh, dates will be finalised leading up to the launch date, and this will include events in the three major cities. Uh, this will all be advertised via our via our email bulletins. Now we're going to pass the button back to you all and open it up for questions once again. Um, please don't hesitate if you have any questions, uh, submit them using the control panel on the right hand side of your screen. Andrew, I'll just pass to you to see if we have any coming through. Um, thanks Carl for that presentation. So I do have a couple of um, questions here. Um, so the first one is, um, does the building need to have a Green Star base building rating? So does it need to have been certified at design or built phase? Um, and what streamlining is there between um, Green Star as built rating and performance rating? Thanks for that question. Uh, so in terms of any pre-existing qualifications for the base building, most definitely not. So what we're trying to achieve with the Green Star performance is uh, deeper, um, is to make deeper inroads into the building industry. What we found with Green Star is that we've affected the top, the top kind of sector of the market, but Green Star performance really targets the majority of building stock which don't have uh, existing ratings. So there is no a requirement for a Green Star base building rating. Uh, whilst having one will definitely benefit your rating. Um, as Andrea mentioned, the Green Star credits and categories kind of dovetail uh, between base building and performance. So achieving a Green Star base building credit in some circumstances can lead to reduced documentation or achieving the credit with limited additional effort. Um, but that, that, that is kind of already stated within the rating tool. Thanks.
thanks for that, Carl. Um, I've just got another question here relating to, um, I guess, the relationship between um, the tenant and owner. So um, it is a rating tool kind of designed for building owners. So what um, do tenants need to participate in the achievement of a performance rating or how does that work? Yeah, it's a really good question. So Green Star Performance is is designed around the base building um, and it rates the base building operations of a building. However, it does open up the opportunity to discuss uh, the environmental operation of buildings with, with tenants and there is additional benefit within the rating tool if you do tap into tenant spaces and do have them assessed. Um, so an example is in the greenhouse gas emissions credit where there's 23 points available. Uh, the majority of the points, which is 20 points, are dedicated to the base building energy operations. However, there are three points available for um, engaging with and including the tenants' results within your energy reporting. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 is a, it is designed as a base building rain tool, but there are additional incentives for assessing tenant spaces and that's rewarded with um, additional points. Okay, and one question here um, around adapting the tool for New Zealand. Um, so how much is the tool changing? Um, and in particular, are the credits for water and energy um, going to be the same as in Australia? Or are they going to be modified for New Zealand? Yeah, another good question. So we've already completed a, an initial pass off the rating tool to understand the the scale of the changes and what we've found is that for the majority of credits there will be some minor tweaks, uh, mainly to the references and standards to suit local conditions, but with the energy and water credits there will be some significant changes in that the, the benchmarks and the data and the reference values that are used uh, will need to be amended to suit New Zealand conditions. So we have, uh, we have sent this piece of work out for a consultant to actually take some time to look into the calculators and understand how the benchmark values should be changed. So there will be some significant changes um, with the energy and water credits. Okay, and um, another question relating um, to neighbours. So will Neighbours New Zealand and the energy section of Green Star Performance be 100% compatible and integrated? Um, and in a, a, another kind of question relating to that is in Australia, obviously other building types, a wider range of building types um, can use neighbours in Australia. Um, and so how does that work in New Zealand? Is neighbours a requirement to be submitted and how does it work where neighbours ratings are not available? Yeah, so let's firstly look at the circumstance where a building does have a neighbours rating. So most definitely they the one rating would plug into the other. So like Andrea emphasised, Green Star is more of a holistic rating. It looks at categories outside of purely energy. Uh, so the neighbours rating would essentially plug in um, and would, would determine the points for the energy credit, um, which is one of 30 within the rating tool. But within the greenhouse gas emissions credit or the energy credit, there are a number of other pathways. So for buildings which may not have a neighbours rating, there are three other pathways which can be selected out of a total four. Um, and this is intended to ensure flexibility within the rating tool so that no matter how old your building might be, no matter how bespoke it might be, there will still be ways for you to benchmark and determine your performance against a baseline. Um, so that, that kind of flexibility is built into the rating tool using credit pathways. Um, it's similar with the, with the potable water credit where there are a number of pathways for um, different types of buildings. Uh, thanks for that, Carl. I think that was a good, clear answer. Um, and I've got one more question here um, that I will answer myself, and that's, um, will the technical manual be freely downloadable from the NZGBC website? Um, so how we will um, uh, look at making this, uh, the technical manual available um, is, is essentially in the same way that the Green Building Council of Australia does, where it's, um, it's provided free um, to members. Um, so for organisations who are uh, members of the New Zealand Green Building Council, um, they will have access to the technical manual um, for free, otherwise there is a charge for uh, non-member organisations. Um, so I welcome any further questions um, at this point, if anyone has any further questions. 
Um, otherwise, uh, I think we probably can wrap up about now. Um, so thank you very much for joining us today and please do get in contact with us if you have any questions, whether it relates to the rating tool itself or to its um, adaptation for New Zealand. And also, um, of course, if you have any uh, projects that you think um, would be interested uh, in using Green Star Performance um, Rating Tool. So thank you again for your participation participation in today's webinar.